The signature experience in my life uh, took place in June of 1966 uh, when I was uh, lucky enough to be accepted into the Domestic Peace Corps, which is essentially VISTA. That's what VISTA was known as, Volunteers in Service to America. And the reason I joined VISTA was not necessarily that I wanted to live and serve the poor, but I was very concerned about being drafted uh, into the United States Army because the Vietnam War was ex escalating in 65 and 66, and a lot of college students were taking positions on the justness and unjustness, just, justice of the war in Vietnam. And I felt very strongly that the war in Vietnam was not a just one and that I did not want to participate in it, nor though did I want to uh, get drafted or have to go to Canada. Uh, and I found out that uh, you could get a deferment if you join either the Peace Corps and work internationally amongst the poor or VISTA and work domestically amongst the poor. And I joined uh, VISTA and was sent from the central area of Seattle to central Harlem in New York City. It was a vast, even though I'm an African American, that was still a vast cultural, uh, social, uh, political change uh, for me. And it was a radicalizing experience, the 15 months that I spent in VISTA. When I went into VISTA, I was, uh, I would have characterized myself as a Negro. Uh, as a college student, as somebody that wanted to do well in college and get a good job so I can live comfortably. Nothing else really mattered to me at that time. Uh, when I got out of VISTA, I uh, was an African American, a black person. Uh, my philosophy had changed from integrationism to black nationalism. My economic philosophy had changed from capitalism to democratic socialism. I did not believe that black people or any oppressed people could gain their freedom other than uh, completely transforming the capitalist economic system. Uh, when I went into VISTA, I believed in you know the efficacy of um, electoral politics. When I got out. I thought it was, you know, a bourgeois plan to sophisticatedly keep black people in their uh, place. When I went into this, I was scared to death of Malcolm X. When I came out, I was one of his strongest advocates, and I had actually joined um, at the latter part of 66 or the early part of 67. I can't remember specifically uh, Malcolm's organization, Organization of African American Unity, that he had begun before he died. Malcolm was brutally assassinated in Harlem in February of 65, and I got to Harlem just 15 months later at the, at the intersection of the beginning of the Black Power era. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, and Central Harlem was uh, just a, a very uh, uh, cultivated basis for a concept like Black Power to take root and spread, and it took root, and it spread very, very rapidly. And I, did, I, as a young black man working in Harlem and living there, I lived on 117th Street. In the central area of CI, I lived on 18th and Alder, uh, by way of graphically showing you what I was dealing with. On 18th, on Alder Street, between 18th and 19th, there was 120 people living on both sides of the street in big inner city houses. Uh, on the street that I lived on in Harlem, 117th between Lenox and 7th, uh, we did a survey and there was 9,000 people living in tenements. And, and we were supposed to be working with children under the age of 15, under the age of 12 on that block. And we did a survey and found that there was um, 1,300 kids living on that one block. It was horrific concentration of black people, mostly poor and uh, working class, and I'd never seen anything like it. And I did not like the conditions of the people and became very determined uh, through the vehicle of black power uh, to work to change the condition of black people in America.